Welcome to Degaris MPC. So what's that? Degaris is my family name. So Degaris and MPC stands for Mathematics, Physics and Computing. And the idea of this video is to introduce to you what Degaris MPC is all about and to introduce me to you because I'll be the professor teaching you all these courses. Now, what, what courses? Well, they're graduate, so masters and PhD level uh, courses in pure mathematics, that's, that's what the M stands for, pure mathematics, mathematical physics, that's the P, and some, although a lot less, uh, computer theory. It's more the pure mathematics of uh, com computing, computation. So uh, the plan is for the next decade, maybe two, I will be probably churning out large numbers of uh, lectures on these uh, two, two, three themes so that it becomes possible for you for free, and that's essential, so that you can educate yourself to PhD level in essentially in math and physics and some computing. So there will be a few senior, say undergrad, a couple of junior, junior, senior, undergrad level courses and then uh, first year masters and then second year masters, first year PhD and second year PhD. So it gets quite advanced uh, uh, later on. So in a sense, um, because these lectures are YouTube, I can go to any level I like. So in some ways I'm raising the bar, so to speak, uh, lifting, lifting the standard of what's usually taught at uh, universities. For example, in my own local university, in the physics department, the, the subject called QFT, that's quantum field theory, is not even taught. And QFT for me is a relatively low rung on a relatively high ladder of uh, what I'll be teaching. Okay, so uh, I'll, uh, here are some of the topics, they're more Props, prompts for me in this talk. So, uh, what is what is Degaris MPC? It's it's actually a tab, one of several. Uh, here are some other tab labels. I'll talk about this in a in another part of this talk. But it's uh, it's a tab that you click on. Now, the actual website, if you want to want to go, is is here written up here. So, Prof Hugo Degaris, um, all one word. Dot word wordpress.com So you go to this website, uh, click on the tab, click on the tab Degaris MPC and uh, then you will get a long list of lecture courses. I, I call them lecture sets, uh, much the same thing. So typically, I don't know, 10, 20 maybe lectures, YouTube, YouTube lectures on that particular topic. And so in this list, there'll be one, one line per course or lecture set So you, you, uh, with a link. So you, you click on that link. So you, you go through the list. There are nearly 600 items there, 600 courses. So it's a huge, huge amount of work for me in the future. And you find one that, that interests you. Click on its link, and then it will, that, that will open up, and then you'll see... Uh, a description of that particular course, and, and in particular the the textbook that that I'll use for that course. And uh, I then give you data about uh, the textbook, so you can either obtain it secondhand if you want uh, in paper form from Amazon, Amazon.com. So I give you the price, both uh, well new. I give you two prices, uh, new and secondhand. Or if you prefer, and especially if you're living in a third world poor country and you can't afford even uh, the second hand prices of, of the first world countries, the developed countries, but then you have a, an option, you have a second option, and that is you can get it for free. You just download it from emule, that's uh, here, emule.com, which is a, a service which provides uh, free research papers and textbooks, which is a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing for, for third worlders. So this combination of uh, camcorders, or uh, I'm using a, 
hand, handy cam. So they're only about hundred dollars. So it becomes this combination of using a handy cam, putting up your videos for free on uh, YouTube and similar institutions, and uh, the possibility of free access to books. You put those three together, and you get a very powerful combination, allowing uh, poor third worlders to educate themselves to yourself to educate yourself to very high level, and that's that's a revolution. That's a social and educational economic revolution. So I'm hoping that what I'm trying to do here with this Degaris MPC becomes an example as a kind of model for other professors, um, well, particularly retired professors. So that, that's the prof in, in the, the website address. So prof just short for professor. So I'm, I'm a retired professor. I retired about two years ago. But uh, I, well, how old do I look? So you, you might be guessing, uh, maybe around 50, perhaps. Well, I'm pretty well, almost 65 as, as we speak, and it's, uh, what, May 2012, as, as I make this introductory video in China, because I'm, I'm living in China. And there's a whole story about that, I'll go into that a bit later. So, um, so if, if these uh, professors who are retired, they have they have more time on their hands. They don't have to do admin type stuff at, at normal university type work. So they they can then they now have the option of downloading, uh, recording their lifelong knowledge. I mean they've you know, spent decades in their careers, their conventional waging that's earning a wage, earning a, a salary in their waging careers, and they can then record that knowledge and put it on YouTube to benefit the world. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to educate uh, large numbers of people because there's YouTube, right? Uh, the whole world has access to YouTube. So if you're interested and you like uh, pure mathematics and mathematical physics, if, you, if you're bright, uh, and in this context I use, I use the word alpha, that's, I spell it because it's easier, A-L-F-A, -A. actually it's uh, the first, well it's A-L, P-H-A, strictly speaking, which is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Now, alphas I define to be very bright people who have IQs, intelligences, in the top 1%. So, so very bright. And to be honest, uh, if you're going to uh, study at PhD level in pure math and math physics, which are the two toughest subjects on university campuses, then you will need to be an alpha. You will need to be bright. This is uh, it's not easy stuff. But as, as I was saying a little bit before, I will start at undergrad level. In fact, uh, you, you can't see it, but about three or four meters from me, on top of my piano, in that direction, are uh, about forty odd uh, textbooks that I will use for the first uh, batch of undergrad courses. So I'll start with the undergrad, uh, which which you'll need if uh, you, you haven't studied these topics before as foundations, as, as a prerequisite for doing what I call M1, that's first year master's level courses and so on. There'll probably be about I don't know, several hundred uh, M1 courses, similarly for M2, second year master's level and so on. Okay, so, uh, well, next topic, who am I? Um, well, I, let's see, from 2001, in fact that, in, uh, <laughs> that eventful day of uh, September the 11th, so as the Americans say, 9-11 in 2001, that was my very first working day as a professor in America, so I was an American professor for about five years or so, and then I got fed up being a, a professor in America because effectively I was just a tax collector. I, I didn't like America's emphasis that uh, the universities would just look on professors as taxable means. Uh, they, the university administration would like to tax your research grants. So then I moved to China. So I was a professor in China for four years, teaching um, graduate level pure math, math physics and computer science and researching into a field called well, AB, artificial 
brains. That was that was my specialty for, for quite a long time. I would evolve neural net uh, modules uh, very very quickly in state of the art, relatively cheap uh, supercomputers. So about ten thousand dollars each. Uh, evolve tens of thousands of these very fast and in seconds each, and uh, connect them up into in interesting ways and make artificial brains. That's that's what I was doing. So I was uh, building China's first artificial brain. But I've been doing that kind of thing, so evolving neural nets for about 20 years. And that's a long time. So I've, over that period, my own brain, my, my biological brain, uh, changed. My, my interest shifted and I became increasingly bored because when you're evolving neural net modules, they're effectively a black box. You, you don't understand what's going on inside them because uh, under evolutionary control, so I, I called what I was doing evolutionary engineering. So I was, I was building stuff using, um, well, if you know any uh, computer science, uh, the technical term is uh, GA, genetic algorithms, which, which is a kind of software or hardware uh, form of Darwinism. So you're, you're evolving uh, random connections between artificial neurons and evolving the, the weights, in other words, the strength of the connections between one neuron and another. So it was all uh, very complex. The dynamics of these evolving uh, neural networks was way too complex uh, to be analyzed in practice. So in effect, they were a black box. So I got, I got rather bored by this because there was no real theory. I mean, it was a wonderful piece of engineering. Uh, they, it, it really worked. Each uh, each module that, that I evolved actually, you know, it, it evolved, right? It, it, it increased its uh, ability to perform the task that I, that I set it. And so uh, I could specify lots of little jobs, so each little neural net module had a job. And I could evolve zillions of these things, you know, all kinds of different little jobs, and then connect them up in interesting ways to, to, to make an artificial brain. But I got bored. I mean, after 20 years of this, I really was itching to to get back to my uh, my original love, uh, which was mathematical physics, you know, studying pure math and physics. So I, I decided to retire and live off my American savings, which go about seven times further in China because China is much poorer and the cost of living here is, is, is a lot lower than it is in the US.